Uh, first, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd uh, first like to thank Mayor Cates for your leadership in this process, the capital budget process, as uh, Mayor uh, had uh, indicated, as well as Ec Executive Policy Committee, and uh, as well as our administration. Um, you know, this is uh, it's a very long process to go through. You get a good uh, snapshot of what's going on in each of the departments. Um, and um, everyone came together in a, in a condensed time frame. Uh, this uh, budget process was, as I mentioned, a little bit more condensed. And that's, uh, we actively didn't start the budget process, if you will, before uh, November. And that was done on purpose because we wanted to make sure that the, all the new councillors that were aboard would be a part of that, that process before we had. So we did uh, crunch some, uh, some time frames to make sure this happens. Um, I'd also like to thank the public for involvement. Uh, for the first time in the city's history, we had pre-budget consultations for the capital budget. Uh, we got a lot of input from, uh, from our citizens, whether it be through coming through the budget consultation sessions, the online uh, surveys that people could fill out, or the CFO's blog, which we think is a, a step in the right direction. Um, you know, this, um, in all total, we had uh, many ideas were shared, not all agreement of them. Uh, we, of course, went through the biggest public consultation session in our four-year history called the municipal election, where people knocked on thousands of doors to get the indications from people what their priorities should be, and they voted and cast their, their ballots on, uh, on, uh, on candidates they believe they recognized it. So we believe that we're closest to the people probably now just being out of, a, out of an election. Uh, the capital budget allocates uh, 370.1 370 million dollars to be spent on major capital projects here in the city of Winnipeg over the next year. Uh, last year, of course, we partnered with the federal and provincial governments on the biggest stimulus project in Canadian history um, to, uh, to address uh, the downturn in the economy. A large amount of those projects, whether it be the Waverly West uh, Extension Road or now the infamous uh, active transportation funding uh, projects that we went through, um, was kind of a part of our equation, if you will. There was also some good investments in uh, the west part of the city in terms of the ICE uh, complex. It wasn't on our priority list, but I think it makes some sense for uh, um, you know, for, uh, for the community. Um, so if you uh, factor out the stimulus, the one-time stimulus dollars, we are actually spending more on capital projects here in the city of Winnipeg in 2011 versus 2012. Uh, as I mentioned in the past recent election campaign, we heard directly from our citizens of what their priorities would be. And the message was quite clear. Spend money on public, public uh, safety initiatives and more money for streets and roads. And the 2010, uh, 2011, the top priority for us, of course, is the public safety investment. This is what the public wanted, and that's exactly what this budget delivers. Um, we really, um, we believe the investments will help to make the community safe over the long term, whether it be a new police uh, station in the downtown or new fire halls that are there. All totaled, about $182 million will be spent on public safety infrastructure over the next number of years. Uh, downtown, a big part of that public safety infrastructure, of course, is the downtown police uh, building. A number of years ago, we made, uh, I think, a pretty good decision. Instead of uh, wasting a whole bunch of money on the, on the face, if you will, of the public uh, safety building, we uh, instead invested money in a new state-of-the-art facility in the downtown Winnipeg. This is going to provide a whole host of different benefits. First of all, you're going to have more police presence in a high-risk area, which we know is needed. There's going to be efficiencies that are associated with it. You're going to have people that are all over the city from the police combined in one area and plus you're going to save some time and labor um, for police traveling back and back to and fro uh, court dates. So we think that was a, a good investment and will be help uh, keep our community safer. Another part of the equation is the fire halls. We invested, this budget invests four new fire halls over the next uh, year. We anticipate being built and a part of that, uh, the big one I think is Sage Creek. I know Councillor Vandell has been, uh, been uh, lobbying for this for a long period of time. What this budget does, it builds a new fire hall in Sage Creek. It's going to cut uh, the response times almost in half to allow the citizens of this area to be, uh, to be included and protected in a more uh, com complete way, if you will. Um, part of that, there's also new fire halls in River Heights and Charleswood and important to uh, the Chair of Finance in St. James, which is uh, very much needed. The five-year uh, plan for fire halls also includes three additional fire halls that will happen, I believe, before 2014, which, uh, which is a big priority. Um, just an award basis and very happy that uh, the ferry or rather the lodge uh, white Wall, will be incorporated in this um, you know we take these decisions lightly but I can tell you these are decisions that are going to protect public over the next number of years when you give uh, first responders better equipment better tools you know better an ability to to reach and, and address uh, incidents that are there um, another part of the equation of the capital budget is uh, the investments in roads and streets 
All totaled, over $111 million will be spent on Total Streets project here in the city of Winnipeg over the next uh, number of years, actually this year. Uh, Chief Peg West Trail uh, extension as well as the Osborne Street uh, Bridge project will be a big part of that. Um, you know, the focus for 2011, of course, on regional local streets. The regional local streets budget for 2011 uh, it increased by over uh, $6.3 million. I think this is an important part that we're spending uh, just over 17% more on regional and local streets this year than we were last year, and more importantly, almost 30% more than what we allocated, we budgeted for in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in last year's document to be spent this year. So we think that's a priority. We're focusing in on that area. Um, these funds basically primarily allocated, as I mentioned, to regional and local streets projects, uh, but also additional uh, uh, regional and local renewals. There's traffic improvements. Uh, that's going to be a part of it. There's also uh, money that goes into recreational uh, facility parking lots that are there and two additional programs for regional community parks and uh, boat launch and dock uh, launches. So we think that uh, this is very much a step in the right direction. Does it get to where we want to go in terms of the spend for these areas? No, but we believe it is a step in the right direction. Also very happy that uh, part of this budget is a new gravel back lane program. This is uh, something that I know that I fought uh, quite heavily with uh, my residents have had concerns with that. I know that's something that uh, the speaker has, Councillor Steves, Councillor Smith, and a whole host of other councillors. What this budget does, it allocates up to a million dollars over the next five years to address some of the crumbling uh, roads. They really are in horrible shape. Um, we have over somewhere in the neighborhood of 380 gravel back lanes. We believe that this will address the problem uh, over the next number of years. And I can tell you it's going to be something that's uh, well accepted by, uh, by our citizens. Um, parks, green space, and uh, recreation facilities. I notice the time isn't going, so just uh, not sure if we know what's... Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Does that apply to all of us? Yeah, yeah. except for Gordon. Except for Gordon. Uh, but with uh, parks, uh, green space, and recreation, the city, of course, is making another historic investment in Assiniboine Park. This year, we're allocating uh, $9.6 million to upgrades, to capital upgrades to Assiniboine Park. That includes also $800,000 of first call money into the 2012 year. Overall, over the next course of this budget, we're spending $57.7 million on Assiniboine Park. We truly uh, believe these investments are going to make Simway Park the jewel of our park system again. I can tell you some of the investments we made last year and this year are starting to bear fruit. Anyone that has gone to the expanded duck pond over the last little while, where you're seeing uh, numbers of people skating or going to the tobogging hill, which is something that uh, that is uh, something that's uh, very much um, very much desired. And I can tell you families are going there in droves and enjoying this. So we're seeing this investment bear fruit. And it's also attracting lots of private sector money to this, which I think is a very important equation. So we're making a lot of good progress. This budget also includes 2.8 or $2.6 million additional funding over 2010 levels um, for additional uh, community parks and multiple use rec, uh, rec center uh, parking lots. Um, the investments also includes additional um, $1.5 million for community parks and $1.7 million for playground structure renewals. That, what that averages out to about $100,000 each of those programs, so $200,000 you'll be able to address in your own wards to address any community park issues that are there. And one thing over the last four years, Mr. Speaker, that we've made dramatic progress on is I think the community parks and uh, park and open spaces that we have here in the city of Winnipeg. Uh, another part, a big uh, equation of the, uh, the budget, Mr. Speaker, is um, delivering on a key promise that Mayor Cates made in terms of the indoor soccer complex at University of Winnipeg. Anyone that travels downtown or been a part of that knows that there's uh, a revolution happening with a lot of the projects that UW have been a part of. You drive down there, you know what's going on. What this money does, it puts more money into recreation facilities, so inner city youth as well as kids throughout the, the area and adults can use this uh, facility. So we think this is a, a very wise investment. This budget also includes money for a new library, um, investments in public safe, public, uh, uh, public libraries that are there. Um, our plan gives some seed money for library within the Windsor Park, North St. Battelle area. I know this is something that's uh, very much needed. We also put some more money into existing infrastructure that is there. Transit, the budget uh, makes advancement in terms of transit related infrastructure. We're spending uh, money to, um, to have new buses that come online. There's 10 additional buses for the rapid transit uh, corridor that was a part of this budget. We're also spending money on the, on the transit uh, bus uh, replacement process, as well as uh, modernizing our fleet in terms of our final commitments in terms of the fare collection systems. 
uh, to make our buses more reliable, how people come on, on board and use our facilities. Water and waste. The budget also uh, lays out our plan for our own water waste and we're living up to our, our, our commitments through the Clean Environment Commission for upgrades to the water and the sewer treatment plants. Uh, we meet our obligations. Um, but what I'd like to add is that we still have not received the two-thirds funding from the other levels of government that were a part of these recommendations. One thing that isn't a part of this budget, the five-year plan, is the ill-conceived nitrogen removal plant that is there. We believe that we're not uh, interested in wasting $365 million of harder, harder and taxpayers' money when you have a truckload of scientists that say, at best, it's going to have a neutral effect. In fact, might even have a detrimental effect, effect to uh, Lake Winnipeg and our facilities there. Infrastructure deficit, something that we always talk about here when the capital budget comes along and is raised on an everyday basis. One thing that can be said, when you go through the budget process and you look at what the numbers have been over the last number of years, in 2001 and 2002, we were spending about $125 million on capital projects here in the city of Winnipeg. Short seven, eight, nine years later, we're tripling our amount of money that we are spending. So to say that we're not addressing the infrastructure deficit or we're not spending more money is completely false, in my opinion. We're also taking some measures uh, that I believe will make sense. We continue to lobby the provincial, or the provincial government for a, a growth-based revenues. We think that makes a lot of sense in terms of how we're spending our money. It means when the economy gets hot, Manitoba and Winnipeg specifically represents anywhere between 6 to 7, 70% uh, of all GDP growth here in the province of Manitoba. So as the economy gets hot, we believe that we should uh, be a part of that. The growth-based revenue, we believe, is a longer-term approach that uh, can help address the infrastructure deficit. So that's a part of it. We continue our lobbying, and we hope that uh, the provincial government uh, hears our calls to do this. I believe I still have one, one minute left. Um, Part of this, uh, a new part of the equation is the asset management strategy. This is a strategy that a few departments are involved in already. It, it, what it does is it allows us to spend money in a smarter way. So it, it looks, instead of just arbitrarily putting numbers, dollars in different uh, budget lines, it says where the money is spent most needed, and we're going to start um, addressing our capital budget in that way. I think you're going to see a very different capital budget over the last number of years. So in conclusion, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the budget meets the priorities of our citizens. Um, it um, invests in public safety infrastructure, invests in roads, invests in bridges. It uh, invests in a new downtown police station, invests in fire halls, would be this year or years to come. It also makes uh, large investments in public and open spaces. We think that uh, this budget is a step in the right direction and uh, we hope that uh, you'll all the councillors will, will be supporting this and we'll hear your comments and I'll respond back to any comments in my closing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks, Councillor.